Good morning, Year 5. Okay, so today's skill, we are looking at interpret and complete tables that have a variety of data sets. So yesterday you looked at tables and uh, were able to read and interpret them with one set of data. So today you are looking at multiple sets. First things first, if you continue with your um, arithmetic today, okay, see if you can get further than you did yesterday. Really push yourself. See if you can do it. There's all things that you've done before. So we're adding and subtracting. And then you're looking at dividing by 10 and 100. Okay. So try your best. Pause the video. Okay. Then come back for the answers when you're ready. Okay. So here are the answers. Okay. I'm not going to read them out because they are clearly on your screen. So again, you can pause the video, mark your work, and give yourself a big smiley face if you've got all the ones that you answered right. Okay, so let's just recap from yesterday then. So let's look at this table. The pupils at the Churchill School have taken part in a survey on their favourite sports. And we can see down here we have the list of sports. Then we've got year four, year five, and year six. Okay. So what's the difference between the number of children in year five and year six who prefer football? Okay, the difference. Remember yesterday we spoke about the difference, so we're subtracting. So we've got 12 children in year five who prefer football, and seven children in year six. What's the difference? Okay, so hopefully you know that's the difference of five. So five children in year five prefer football over those in year six. Okay, the next question. How many more pupils prefer rugby in year six than year four? Okay, so again, we're finding out how many more. So we can either start at year four rugby, which is seven children and count on to 16, or we can subtract seven from 16. So that would be nine children. Okay, so when we're reading a two-way table, you have to make sure you're looking really carefully at the data. You need to locate the correct row and column to identify the information you require. So as a quick reminder, the column the ones that go down and then the rows are the one that go across okay so let's have a look identify the row and column I should use if I want to find out how many female inspectors there are so the first thing I would do here is I would read the question really carefully and I have to identify how many female inspectors there are. So I'd find female, which is in this column here, female. And then I'd have to look down the side to find inspector. Now you have to look really carefully because one says chief inspector, but we just want inspector. So how many female inspectors there are? And as we can see, there are four. We have highlighted the female column and the inspector row. Okay, so if you're working from home, ask somebody to work this out with you or try on your own if you think you can, that's absolutely fine. So just work through these questions, remembering to look at the columns and the rows really carefully. Okay, so it says how many constables are there all together? So if we're looking at something all together, we need to have a look at the total. So here, the last column says the total amount of people. Now, you probably notice there's also a total at the bottom. Now, this tells us the total of males. This tells us the total of females, because this is the column they're in. And if we look across here, 79 tells us the total amount of constables. 13 tells us the total amount of sergeants. Six tells us the total amount of inspectors, and two tells us the total amount of chief inspectors. 
Okay, so how many constables are there all together? There are 79. How many people work at the police station? How many work at the police station all together? How will you find out this information? Which row and column do you need to look at? Okay, so this is the total number of people that work in the police station. How many more male constables are there compared to female constables? Okay, so you need to find the male constables and the female constables. How many more male? So what do you need to do for this one? Okay, so you've got 55 and you're going to take away the 24. Okay, so you're going to have 31. So there's 31 more male constables than there are female constables. And then you need to have a look how many male inspectors and female constables are there all together. Okay, so you need to find the male inspectors, which is here, so that's two. And the female constables, that's 24. So you're going to add the two together. 24, add two, and you should have 26. Okay, how about this one then? So what does the data in this table show us? Okay, so we're looking here and we can see that at the top we've got the labels of football teams. So we have got Man United, Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur, which is my team. Okay, so down the side we've got lost, won and total. So it's telling us the stats of the games they've played. So how can I calculate the total number of games Man United have played? We haven't got this information, so we need to calculate the information first. Okay? So you need to calculate the total number of games Man United have played. So how do you think you can do that? What do you need to do? Okay? You need to add these two numbers together. So the games they've won and the games they've lost together. And that will give you your total answer. You then need to calculate how can I calculate the total number, total amount of games lost. Okay. So to find the total amount of games, so this is where it's going to go because this is where our lost row is here. So you need to calculate the total number of games lost. Okay. So to find the total, you're going to add these numbers together to find your total here. And then finally, how could I find out how many games Liverpool won? Okay, well we know the total is 154. That's the total amount of games that Liverpool have played. We know that they've lost 42. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to take away 42, subtract 42 from 154, which will tell you how many games Liverpool won. Okay, so have a go at answering that table by yourselves. Okay. Pause the video and then come back when you're ready to move on. Okay, so under the resources, Okay, on the um, on the school website, there are there's this printout for you. Okay, so you can have a print it out or just copy it out into onto a piece of paper. Um, and I would like you to fill in the missing gaps before you answer the questions. Okay, so it shows how many children own cats and dogs. Okay, so how many more boys have dogs than girls? Well, we don't know yet because you have to work out the missing gap. So have a go at this one by yourselves, okay? And um, ask somebody at home for help if you need it, okay? And then I'll pop the answers on the resources as well for you. Okay, once you have done those practices at home and you have completed those, have a go and see if you can make your own two-way table using information. Now, in the class, we're going to do it about our class. 
If you're at home, you could perhaps do it with somebody, something about your family, okay? Perhaps afterwards, once you've finished, you could think about some questions about the data and ask somebody to answer them for you, see if you can challenge them. Okay, it's really important though that you label your rows and columns so we know what the data is showing. You might want to include some, um, so here are some examples for you about what you might want to include. So obviously we're doing this in the classroom, so we're going to um, look at perhaps boys and girls and how they get to school. We might look at the amount of children that are left-handed or right-handed. And we might see who has school lunch or packed or packed lunch. Okay, the girls and boys. So you think of something you might want to do at home. Okay, you might want to do whether they're boys or girls in your family or males or females. You might want to say, what's your favourite day? Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? Okay, you might want to do a favourite dinner and ask people. Your, it's your choice. You can choose how you do your table if you'd like to do one. If not, the two practices you've already done are absolutely fine, but this is just if you want to do some independent work as well. And then your final thought of today. This table shows the number of bath bombs produced by three people over three days. The table is incomplete, so it's not finished yet. So again, we need to think about the gaps and how we can fill those. So Chloe says, I made 67 bath bombs on Wednesday. So at the moment, we can see Chloe made 163 on Monday, but we haven't got any data here. And we haven't got the total, so we can't even subtract 163 because we've still got two missing boxes. Okay. What we can do, though, is we can see the total for Wednesday is 218. So we can take away 68, the 68 that Ash made, we can take the 93 away that Jake made, and that would leave us with our answer. So do you agree with Chloe? Can you explain your reasoning? Okay, have a think, pause the video, then come back once you're ready. Okay, hopefully you would have worked out that Chloe is incorrect because she made 57 bath bombs on Wednesday. She just miscalculated. Okay, so she's added the 93. So if we add the 93 and the 68 together, it's 161. We take the 161 away from the 218. It's going to equal 57. Okay, that's all for today. Have a lovely day with your learning and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. See you later. Bye.